Welcome to this short video on applying holistic thinking to the problem of determining the future availability of technology. I'm Joseph Kassa and this is a supplementary reading for my class on systems thinking and beyond and I use it in other classes as well to show the application of holistic thinking to a specific problem determining the future availability of technology and basically I'm using this example to show the thinking involved and how holist and, and the steps in holistic thinking. So the topics I'm going to talk about are the undesirable situation, the non-holistic approach, the holistic approach, the, and then summarize the benefits of using holistic thinking and questions and comments at the end in the usual way. So the undesirable situation is successful system development often relies on the availability of needed technology being developed in parallel with the system. And we're talking generally here about complex systems in defense, in aerospace, and in transportation where the technology that we need to actually implement the system doesn't exist and we need to have some level of confidence that, that it will exist when we actually need it. So the technology readiness le levels, TRL, were developed to solve the problem of not having a developed technology when it was needed. However, once it was in use, people found that the approach was flawed. And there have been several art papers written on the topic, and I quote one, the Salsa Verma paper from TRL to SRL, published in the Conference on Systems Engineering Research in 2006, and then the comment in 2014 that says program managers underestimate the time and technical effort needed to mature technologies above TRL level 6 to achieve higher levels of maturity. And that's really no surprise because if you think about it, a TRL is a single data point. And with a single data point, you have you only have information on the current status. You cannot predict the future because you have no idea about the rate of change. So, what is a TRL? Well, on slide four, I show you NASA's version of a TRL. It's basically nine levels of technology maturity. And you start at level one with the basic principles, and level two says you the technology, the concept is formulated, and then level three, analytical and experimental critical function, and you've got a proof of concept, but there's no real hardware yet. And then you get to level four, where you've got a breadboard version in a laboratory environment and then level five where you take it out into a relevant environment and you try it out and then level six where you've got the technology in use in a subsystem model or a prototype and you demonstrate it in a, a relevant environment and so you can say that levels one through one through five are the basic research areas six and seven and eight are development where seven is you've actually prototyped the system using the technology in a space environment. Eight is where you've actually flight qualified it. And nine is when it's actually proven through successful mission operations and you can go ahead and use the technology in other missions, in other systems for other missions. So that's NASA's definition of TRL. So how is the tech TRL used? Well, let's take a look. Here's an example. We have an undesirable situation and let's go back in time and say, assume it's 1998 and we're going to deploy a system in 1999, but there's no suitable technology available at TRL 7, 8 or 9. There is one at TRL level 6 and you can see NASA's TRL meter here that sort of basically shows a thermometer, an alcohol thermometer for those of you who recognize what it is. 
version of the table that I showed in the, in the previous slide. So the problem we have as a program manager or a systems engineer, depending who's going to make the decision, is do we use that? Do we plan to use that technology that's now at level six, or do we look for an alternative because we don't know of one at the moment? So let's formulate the problem using the non-holistic problem-solving approach and the template and the problem-solving template. The undesirable situation is the need. We need the technology for a product. The technology is underdeveloped. The maturity and its availability is unknown. So there's a risk. The technology may not be ready when needed. So the problem, as stated, is we need to know the maturity of the technology. And the solution is the, that was developed by NASA was the TRL. So it was developed by NASA and then DOD, Department of Defense, used it. And basically, they took a look at the TRL and then they approved the technology for use if it was above a certain TRL. And if I add in the feasible conceptual future desirable situation, then the technology, that would be that the technology is ready when needed because the undesirable situation is the technology may not be ready when needed. But that, the problem where it says we need to know the maturity, if you frame it this way, it's the wrong question. Because you didn't start with a situation. We need to predict the maturity in the future, not know it now. So the TRL is predicated based on the maturity level in 1998. Remember, that's where we are. And we really need to know the maturity in 1999 when we actually need it. So we're actually asking the wrong question when you, and this is one of the benefits of the problem solving framework. So let's now take a look at the holistic approach to remedying the undesirable situation. And if you remember, we look at the situation from the holistic, from the perspectives perimeter and from each of the holistic thinking perspectives on that perimeter. So if we look at it from the big picture perspective, we would document, we would document the assumptions the description about the need for the technology, what this thing is going to do, the fact that the technology is still under development and it's some level of maturity. And then we describe the environment in which the product system will be used, who the users are, and the external systems interfacing with the product and so on. From the operational perspective, we would document the missions that the technology is going to be used in. And there are one-of-a-kind missions, single-use, short-term, and long-term. These were basically NASA's planetary space explorers, and where they'd build one spacecraft, and it would go out and do something, and, and then they would build, they would totally redesign the spacecraft using different technology for a different mission. And each spacecraft would be optimized for the particular mission. The military targets of opportunity where they would have one-of-a-kind missions. And this for the um, classic example here is the Dam Busters. Most people have seen the movie. And that was known as Operation Chastise, May the 16th, 1943. And that went operational at TRL level 6. And most of these one-of-a-kind missions can go operational at TRL level 6 because they take the breadboard and they install it in whatever's going to do the mission. And it's only one, so it's one of a kind. And then there are other missions that have many uses over a long period of time. And these are commercial products and military products. And then you have the various in-between scenarios that other people can come up with. So from the structural or the quantitative perspective, you come up with a table and nine levels. And I've already talked about this one. This was the NASA one that I showed earlier. DOD modified it slightly, but kept the same 
nine levels and basically they just took out the word space and ground and just generalized it a little more. From the continuum perspective, you can see that maturity and obsolescence or maturity readiness and obsolescence are considered separately. Maturity readiness is considered using a TRL and obsolescence is considered using a totally different um, viewpoint and that's the DMSMS, the Diminishing Mat Manufacturing Sources and Material Shortages. And yet what we're concerned about from a holistic perspective is the availability of technology. Not only when it's not only when will it be ready, but how long will it be available for? And that shows up in the temporal perspective that I'll get to in a moment. Another view of the quantitative perspective was this from the uh, GAO report in 1999, where it shows the TRLs as step functions, but it's not actually measured. It's used as a representation and it's not a timeline. It just shows numbers associated where you have high risk for project launch. And basically, it's saying that if your TRL is below level six, you've got a high risk for a product launch. And if your TRL is eight and nine, it's lower risk. And the temporal perspective shows up in the whale diagram, which you can show here on slide 15. And many products use technology represented by sequential S curves inside the whale, which I haven't bothered. And once the technology is ready, it's only available for a limited time because the, the whale diagram shows that the technology will be overtaken or will only last a certain amount of time before it is overtaken by some other technology. And the TRLs happen in the early part of the whale diagram, that's the tail. And obsolescence happens at the later part in time, that's the head of the diagram. And the technology available window of opportunity, that's the life cycle view, covers the whole of the life cycle from adolescence to old age. And so if we want to use a technology during adulthood and maturity, as well as understanding how it develops through adolescence and how it's going to be phased out in old age, we ne really need to be thinking technology available window of opportunity, not TRL, when it's a single point. So let's re-examine the situation using the TRL. Again, the current undesirable situation, it's 1998, the systems using the technology is to deploy it in 1999. There's no suitable technology at eight or nine, but there is a technology at six. And the FCFDS is the technology is available when needed, not ready when needed, available when needed. Notice how we've changed the perception. And so the problem is the uncertainty, same one, do we use the technology or do we look for an alternative? So our derived problem here before we can make the decision is we have to determine if the technology will be available when needed. So the solution is in the scientific perspective. And one solution is a technology available window of opportunity. It shows the rate of change of maturity and it shows the period of time in production before obsolescence. And so it covers that whole life cycle view. And so here we need to consider the time to advance the maturity to a usable TRL. Remember, the technology is currently available at level six. Do we use it or not? Well, again, part of the answer to that question is what's our mission? Is it a one of a kind, in which case the answer is probably yes, or are we going to use this technology in lots and lots and lots of products, in which case we do need a technology, a TRL level of nine? And what about the obsolescence issues? We need to consider those as well. So change of technology, 1990 to 2001, TRL is six, 
and it's needed in 1999. So let's plot these on a graph. The current TRL is level 6, 1998. Can we use it in 1999? Well, there's absolutely no information here about whether you can or whether you can't. And that's why people have difficulty making decisions. So what information do we have? Well, we've got a history, and we can see how that TRL changed. And so we can look back and say, well, at 1991, when we started developing this technology, it was at level 1, and it stayed at level 1 till 95 when it went to level 2. It stayed at level 2 till 97, and it was only in 98, 98 that it got to level 6. Still not much use, is it? Well. What was the plan in the first place? Do we have that data? Ah, so we can look at the plan and say, well, it was planned to be at level 9 in 1999. And we're behind the plan, but we're catching up. Still, not much use there, is it? So what can we do? Well, we can estimate. But um, there isn't much data there, is there? And that's why we got that quote, program managers underestimate the time and technical effort needed to mature technologies above level 6 to achieve higher levels of maturity. So let's use a little bit of holistic thinking here and go beyond systems thinking. And let's look from the temporal and the generic perspectives. Let's look at the historic rate of change of maturity. Not just where the levels were, but the rate of change. And this might help us identify factors preventing the increase in maturity level. For example, was there, was there a lack of funding? Were it technical problems? Was it political problems? And once we can, un once we can, uh, once we can figure out where and why, we then may be able to figure out what to do about it. And, and that might help us estimate the future change in maturity level because we will be able to generate more information and perhaps help out. And it might also allow us to predict and maybe delay the obsolescence. And from the generic perspective, I showed you in the previous slide we compared planned and actual. Is there anything else that's being used currently in some other box. This is where the out-of-the-box thinking comes that compares planned and actual. And if you look in the financial and the project management world, you will know about earned value analysis where you actually compare the estimated amount of something with the actual amount of something, particular the costs, in your project management reports. And so if you remember this drawing where I showed the current TRL and here I'm plotting the levels, if we change that to plot the rate of change, we end up with something that looks like this on slide 20. And you can see that the planned was planned as a straight line and the actual fell behind. But in 1994 there was a change. In 1996, there was a change. In 1997, there was a change. And if you assume there are not going to be any changes, which is not a very good idea, you can predict that by 1999, it will be there. So you can go ahead and say, OK, let's use that technology because it will be there by 1999. Well, I wouldn't do that if I were you. I would go back to the people who are developing the technology, show them this diagram and say, what happened in 1997 to change that slope? What happened in 1996? And do we look like where this prediction will hold or not? And then make the decision. But at least I now have more information and can make an informed decision. And then to summarize the, the problem of TRL, I can modify the TRL into a TWU, technical, t 
technology availability window of opportunity and I can map the whale diagram into NASA's table and extend it. So levels 1 to 8 are the same but they need to be dynamic rather than static so you need to show that figure. Level 9 is exactly the same but we change the name to operational that means the technology is available for use in new products. And then we have level 10 where we're approaching obsolescence. So in, if a technology is in level 10, use the technology in existing products but not in new products. Level 11 is where it's obsolete. There are spares available so maintenance is still feasible so your product, your system can still be used but you need to start thinking about replacing it. And when you get to level 12, you're running an antique. There are few of any spares available in the used equipment market, so you actually need to phase this out or operate it until you run out of spares and it dies on you. To woo. So the benefits of holistic thinking in this instance is asking the good questions. When you start looking from those different perspectives, you see things differently. As I've shown in the, in the lecture, in the video, whichever one you've watched in the book on holistic thinking. So one of the benefits is posing the right question, problem. So remember this thing started off with the question, what is, what is the maturity of the technology? And that, the answer to that is current maturity of the technology, well that's the TRL. Fair enough, that's an answer to that question, but it wasn't the right question. Then the question became, when will the technology be ready for use? Which is what you needed to know to predict if the system could be used. And that was the dynamic TRL. But from a holistic life cycle perspective, that wasn't the right question either. The right question was, when will this technology be available for use? And that's really, when will it be ready? And for how long will it be available? And that's a to-woo. And so the out-of-the-box solution came from a combination of the generic and the temporal perspectives. And that's the benefit of holistic thinking, because you go system thinking and beyond. Systems thinking gave you the understanding of the situation and the problem, but it was the generic perspective that went beyond systems thinking from where the solution came from. So in summary, talked about the undesirable situation and stated the FCFDS, the non-holistic approach, the holistic approach, the benefits and, the, and, and how the solution came from going beyond systems thinking, and I've shared the some of the thought processes in using the systemic and systematic approach to the problem of determining the availability of the technology. Now the TAWU is a conceptual solution, and there are, or there should be, quite a bit of research into how you can actually set this thing up. Because in the same way as a TRL is just a list of nine levels, the TAWU is a list of 12 levels. But is there anything there that can be used to actually predict obsolescence? And so it would be an interesting research topic to go into. Any questions or comments in the usual way? And thank you for viewing this presentation.